In this video, I'm going to discuss this paper uh, 970221. So, paper 2 of CIE, June 2023. So, the first question is define power. So, as we know, power is defined as the work done per unit time. Or you may say P is equal to the energy over time or the work done over time. So you may state this equation also, you will be uh, rewarded by uh, one mark. In the first question, A2 question is, use the uh, definition of power to show that the SA un base units of power r kg meter square s raised to minus 3. So as we know power is equal to work done over time. So work done is force multiplied by the distance. So you may use d or s whatever you want divided by t. So f is the force. Force uh, multiplied by distance is what we call the work done. So force is mass times acceleration. So, if you are simplifying this uh, formula, the basic formula of power, you will be getting mas divided by t. So, in the case of uh, units, if you are dealing with units, it's really um, good to uh, know the equations. If you don't know the equation, you cannot uh, show the base uh, unit of this power. So, in this is the equation for power so we can convert this equation or you uh, you can use this equation to find the unit of power so unit of power is unit of mass which is kilogram unit of acceleration which is meter per second square and this is distance unit of distance is meter divided by unit of time time is second which means that kg meter square s to the power of minus 3 is the unit of power. The next question, B question is, the intensity of a sound wave moving through a gas is given by I equals to S square A square V K, where F is the frequency of the wave. So here also, uh, I think you need to find out the base unit. So just be remember it is um, already mentioned that you need to find the base unit so we have like seven base units so the unit of k must be in terms of that base units only so we can um, find out the units of this individual terms like the frequency is actually the unit is hertz which means that f is equal to 1 by t the unit of uh, frequency would be T is the time period right so 1 over s this is termed as hertz so in terms of base unit you can say the unit of frequency is s inverse because seconds is the base units one of the base units so uh, the next one is a which is the amplitude of the wave amplitude is the maximum displacement from its equilibrium position so the unit of amplitude will be the same as the unit of displacement which is meter then v is the speed of the wave speed unit is meter per second then uh, uh, k is a constant that depends on the gas so you need to determine the uh, base unit of k right so you can use this uh, equation as we know we need the basic equation i is equal to f square a square v k please rearrange this uh, formula to find out k so k is equal to i divided by f square a square v so we know the units of f i mean frequency amplitude and the speed but we don't know the unit of intensity so you can find out the unit of intensity as well so intensity formula is power divided by area so unit of power you already uh, found uh, in the previous question which is kg meter square s to the power of minus 3 divided by area area is length multiplied by uh, breadth 
which means that meter square would be the unit of area so meter square and meter square will get cancelled so unit of intensity would be kilogram as seconds raised to minus 3 so you can use these uh, units to find out the unit of k the constant so unit of k is equal to the unit of intensity first which is kg seconds raised to minus 3 divided by frequency unit which is uh, s to the power minus 1 so here it is square so s to the power of minus 2 would be the unit then a square which means that meter square multiplied by meter per second or meter seconds raised to minus 1 so here you may f uh, find out that kg i mean kilogram seconds raised to minus 3 divided by you can just rearrange to like this meter cube and s to the power of minus 3 which means that both denominator and numerators having s to the power of minus 3 so it will get cancelled so you'll be getting kg meter raised to minus 3 so the base units or unit of uh, k the constant is kg meter raised to minus 3 second question is a rigid uniform beam of weight w so if you are come across the uniform term which means that this uh, beam this is that uh, beam mentioned this beam uh, having a uniform distribution of mass so the center of gravity would be at the center of its length if it is 50 centimeter the uh, center of gravity or the weight will be acting on 25 centimeters so please be remember this way, uh, beam is connected to a fixed uh, support by a hinge as shown in figure 2.1. This is that hinge. A compressed spring exerts a total force of 8.2 Newton vertically upwards. So here the spring is exerting a force upward which is having a magnitude of 8.2 Newton Okay, on the horizontal beam. A block of weight 0 0.30 Newton rests on the beam. The right hand end of the beam is connected to the ground by a string at an angle of 30 degree to the horizontal. This string, okay, it is at a 30 degree. The tension in the string is 4.8 Newton. The distance along the beam are shown in figure 2.1 so this figure is playing a, a crucial role in this question the beam is in equilibrium so be careful if it is mentioned equilibrium which means that upward and downward forces will be equal and the sideways forces also right hand side force would be equal to the left hand side forces okay so uh, that's what mentioned uh, the whole uh, forces are in equilibrium i mean balanced assume that the hinge is frictionless so there is no forces um, or due to this hinge so in the a part the first question is show that the vertical component of the tension in the string is 2.4 newton so let's consider this part this is the um, string uh, mentioned so the force is in this direction right downward you can resolve this force into this horizontal and this vertical direction so you need to find out this vertical component so if you have a um, a line okay a force in this direction let's suppose this is a force which is acting at an angle theta to this horizontal okay so if you're if you wanted to find out the horizontal component you just need to add the cos component of this angle if you want to find out the um, opposite okay the uh, this component vertical component which is like opposite or against the angle given then it is f sine theta okay this is simple method to resolve a vector so let's suppose the angle given is this one the angle to the um, vertical one okay then 
this component the vertical component would be f cos theta the component which is like uh, opposite to this angle given would be f sin theta so it will swap so it's a best method to remember the resolving vectors okay so if you uh, the there is a there must be an angle given right so if you are resolving that vector uh, in um, line with the angle then it will be a cos component okay this would be a cos component if you are uh, moving or uh, resolving this vector in this opposite direction then it will be a sine component okay so here it is again uh, it's not in the direction of the angle given right so this would be f sine theta all right so please write down this vertical component of the tension is equal to 4.8 which is the force given multiplied by sine of the angle given 30 degree so if you are doing this calculation you will be getting the value as 2.4 newton hence we showed that the uh, vertical component is 2.4 newton then the next question is by taking the uh, moments about the hinge determine the weight of the beam so here it is given which steps you need to follow you need to take the moment since the beam is in uh, equilibrium you may find out that the upward moment or the sum of upward moments must be equal to the sum of downward moments so you know the moment equation the moment of a force is the force multiplied by the uh, distance um, from that pivot to that force okay so here you may find out the sum of um, upward moments so what are the upward forces acting on this beam there is only one upward force 8.3 which is exerted by this spring what is the distance between this force uh, to this hinge this is uh, you need to find out the mo moment uh, about this hinge okay so this distance is what you need to consider which means that 0 0.50 meter so of upward um, moment would be 8.2 multiplied by 0 0.50 let's consider the sum of the downward force so what are the uh, forces acting on this downward forces acting on this beam one is the weight is the perpendicular uh, distance between this weight and the hinge this length which is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 which is 0 0.6 meter then the next uh, force is 0 0.30 newton the weight of this block that is resting on this beam which is at a distance of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 which means that this distance is 0 0.8 meter then it's not uh, completed there is one more downward force which is the vertical component of this tension acting on this string this component that you already found is 2.4 newton so the perpendicular distance between the line of force and this pivot is 0 0.5 plus 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.4 which is 1.2 meter okay so we can substitute these values here so it would be weight the perpendicular distance 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3 multiplied by the distance 0 0.80 meter plus 2.4 the vertical component multiplied by the perpendicular distance you may do the calculation okay just find out the uh, the individual values and then rearrange you will be getting the uh, w value as 1.63 newton 
then the next question in this 2a part uh, third question calculate the horizontal component of the force exerted on the beam by the hinge so the one thing that i told you before solving this question is that this beam is in equilibrium which means that the forces are balanced if there is a downward force it must be balanced by an upward force if there is a right hand side force it must be balanced by a left hand side force so here you need to find out the horizontal the component not this vertical okay so the horizontal component of the force exerted on the beam by the hinge okay so what are the horizontal components there is a force in this direction by this string right this force this is the only horizontal force acting on this hinge so if this is the uh, force exerted by the string on the beam an equivalent force will be acting on this hinge as well there will be a force acting on this uh, beam by the hinge so what you need to find out is the horizontal component of this force on the string so as you know the horizontal component is f cos theta so here the force is 4.8 multiplied by cos of 30 the angle given which is equal to 4.2 newton which means that this is the force act um, exerted on the beam by the uh, string the same force will be exerted on this beam by the hinge then only the beam would be in equilibrium okay then we can move on to the uh, b part of this question the spring obeys hook's law and has a has an elastic potential energy of 0.32 joules calculate the compression of the spring so you need to find out or you need to memorize or use the uh, formula sheet given the energy stored in a um, compressed spring or extended string is given by uh, from this formula e is equal to half fx f is the force acting on it on the spring x is the uh, compression or the extension okay here you need to find out this x value so please rearrange this formula so x would be equal to 2 multiplied by the energy uh, elastic potential energy divided by the force exerted okay so here the force exerted the elastic potential energy is already given that is 0 0.32 but uh, you don't know the force exerted you can find out it uh, from the figure itself because the uh, force exerted would be the force acting on this spring which is compressing right so since the f uh, beam is equilibrium the upward force must be balanced by the downward force if the spring is exerting 8.2 uh, newton what will be the restoring force on the spring would be the same right so 8.2 is the force that you need to consider so 8.2 you do the calculation and you will be getting the compression length as 0 0.078 meter then moving on to the next part of this question c the string is cut so that the spring extends upwards okay this causes the beam to rotate and launch the block into the air the block reaches a maximum height and then falls back to the ground. It's following a parabolic path. Figure 2.2 shows a part of the path of the block in the air shortly before it hits the horizontal ground. So this is that path, this dotted line. Okay, so this is the position A, which is below the maximum height. Just remember that. The block is at a height of 0 0.090 meter above the ground when it passes through point A. So at this point, this length is given. The block has a kinetic energy of a 0.044 joules when it hits the ground at point B. 
air resistance is negligible so if the air resistance is negligible there is no horizontal forces acting on it so the first part is calculate the decrease in the gravitational potential energy of the block for its movement from a to b so the data is given uh, shows you that the kinetic energy at this point is 0 0.044 joules right so what uh, at this point okay when it reached uh, this um, horizontal ground all the potential energy that it must be having on this maximum height so let's consider this is the maximum height so whatever the maximum height energy or the potential energy at the maximum height will be converted to the kinetic energy which means that at the maximum height the ball or the block would be having the potential energy of 0.044 joules okay so at this point the energy of this uh, block would be kinetic energy some of the kinetic energy would be there and uh, an amount of potential energy also okay as we know the gravitational potential energy equation is delta e is equal to n g delta s so if you know the height difference and the mass you can find out the gravitational potential energy for that okay so here what you know is that um, weight of the block is already given that is 0 0.3 so weight formula is w is equal to mg so here the mg term is already given in this uh, question okay in the previous part you can check so you can substitute 0 0.30 in that so what you need to know is that height so height is already given that is 0 0.090 so please do the calculation and you will be getting 0 0.027 joules so this would be the decrease in the gravitational potential energy of its block from this A point to B point. So the height difference would be 0 0.090 meters. Okay, so it's a direct question. Use your answer in a C1 and conservation of energy to determine the speed of the block at A. So at the point A, what will be the speed of its block? As I already told you, there will be kinetic energy and the potential energy. So the potential energy of the of this block at position A, uh, you already calculated, but you need to find out the potential energy. Uh, sorry, the kinetic energy because uh, the kinetic energy term is, uh, is the only one having the velocity, not the potential energy, right? So uh, here is that. Um, relevance of this term air resistance is negligible so if the air resistance is negligible you know that there is no forces acting on it and the energy will be conserved in every term and you need to use that also okay so what is the sum of the energy of this block a uh, i mean block at uh, point a is having would be the same as that um, for that block at position b as well so the kinetic energy and the potential energy uh, of that block at a position would be equal to the kinetic energy at the um, of the block at position b because the uh, energy would always be conserved right so using conservation of energy the potential energy plus the kinetic energy at A would be equal to the kinetic energy at position B. So you don't know the kinetic energy here, but you know the potential energy of course, 0 0.027. Kinetic energy of uh, the block at B is given as 0 0.044 joules. So Please rearrange so you will be getting 0 0.044 minus 0 0.027 which is equal to 0 0.017 joule. So the kinetic energy of the uh, block at position A is this much. So what is the, um, I mean uh, the formula for the kinetic energy which is half 
m v square that is equal to 0.017 joule so here you may wonder we don't have this uh, m value but you can find out because weight is given as uh, 0.030 right so 30 newton weight formula is mg so n is equal to weight divided by g which is 0.3 divided by 9.81 which would be equal to 0.03 kilograms so here you may rearrange to find out v square which is equal to 2 times 0.017 divided by 0.03 which is equal to 1.13 so v is equal to root of 1.13 which is 1.1 meter per second so here the value of the speed is 1.1 actually the value would be 1.06 so you can round it into 1.1 then the third question, by reference to the force on the block, explain why the horizontal component of the velocity of the block remains constant as it moves from A to B. So what is the reason for that horizontal component, uh, the constant value of this horizontal component? Because there is no horizontal forces acting on it. All the forces are vertical. So the resultant force acting on it, what's the reason for it to fall from A to B? The only reason is weight, right? So that will be the resultant force acting on it. What is the weight? Uh, so according to that, the um, object would be moving right so a to b the force acting on it is only for uh, the weight or the resultant force which is vertical always the force i mean or the weight would be vertical so the resultant force is also vertical so there is no uh, force is acting on the horizontal component that's why the horizontal component of the velocity stays the same then the fourth question is the uh, block passes through point A at time TA and arrives at point B at time TB. On figure 2.3, sketch a graph to show the variation of the magnitude of the vertical component Vy of the velocity of the block with time T from T is equal to TA to T is equal to TB. Numerical values of Vy are not required. So here is also you need to find out the change in the vertical component because the horizontal component stays the same, right? So here what will be the value? Anyways, uh, at position A, it is having a particular velocity, right? Okay. It's uh, let's consider here. What will be the velocity of this block at position B? As it falls from A to B, all the potential energy would be converted into kinetic energy. So all the energy is in kinetic energy, kinetic form. So the velocity will be increasing as the height is decreasing, right? As it falls, the velocity is increasing. So the value would be greater than this point. So let's make it clear the graph would be like this okay so since the numerical values is not important it doesn't matter the uh, graph would be having a positive slope this would be a graph so let's move on to the next question third question a block is pulled in a straight line along a rough horizontal surface by a varying force x as shown in figure 3.1 so here is a block the momentum must be the rough surface okay air resistance is negligible so there is no forces due to this air assume that the frictional force exerted on the block by the surface there will be always a frictional force because it's a rough surface right and that value is constant and having a magnitude of 2.0 Newton the variation uh, with uh, time t of the momentum p of the block is shown in figure 3.2 
so here as the um, uh, time passes the momentum is increasing and then the momentum stays the same for two seconds so the first question i mean the a part of this question is state newton's second law of motion so the newton second law of motion is related to the force and the momentum and the statement is like this the resultant force acting on an object is directly proportional to the rate of change of the linear momentum of that object or you may say it is equal to f is equal to uh, dp or dt or if it's a larger change delta p over delta t this is the formula uh, to describe the second law of motion b part is use figure 3.2 to determine uh, for the block at uh, time t is equal to 2 seconds the magnitude of the resultant force on the block okay the resultant force is what you need to find out at time 2 second okay so this is that position so from this graph you may find out the um, at time 2 seconds the momentum is uh, 3 kg meter per second right so what you need to find out the force so to find out the force the formula is the um, change of momentum divided by change of time right that's what uh, the newton second law says so here what will be the change previously it was zero so uh, it is increased to three which means that three is the change of momentum divided by the time is two then it is uh, equal to 1.5 newton so there is another method you may find out the there is a constant increase in this momentum right so if you are finding for this particular position or uh, from this position to this posi position or from zero to uh, this four second doesn't matter since this gradient uh, delta p over delta t is representing the uh, slope of this straight line so it would be the same okay so um, you may uh, use this uh, method or you may use the other method like f is equal to you may find it since uh, the there is a uh, like a constant changes momenta the force acting on this block also will be the same f is equal to delta p over delta t the max uh, the larger change is 6 divided by four that's also giving you the value 1.5 newton doesn't matter anyways the same but then the b part is the force x okay the force x what is x represent the varying force okay so you are exerting x force but there is a um there is a two forces acting on it um the x force and there is a frictional force in this opposite direction so the resultant force uh, would be the sum of these two forces right so the resultant force would be the sum of x plus uh, the um, the frictional force acting on an object which is having a magnitude of 2 which is in the opposite direction so the force uh, uh, magnitude would be 2 the resultant force is already uh, you found as 1.5 right so you may rearrange x is equal to 1.5 and you need to move this minus 2 to the other side so that it would be plus 2 so the force x would be the sum of 1.5 plus 2 which is 3.5 5 newton 3.5 okay then the c part is on figure 3.3 sketch a graph to show the variation of force x with a uh, time t from uh, t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 6 seconds so for this question you need to plot right okay so plot against the vary, uh, varying force and the time taken okay let's consider this uh, graph so in this graph you may find that uh, from uh, the time uh, 0 to 4 second there is a constant increase in this momentum so if there is any changes in this momentum 
there will be a force acting on it so uh, that's what uh, given from this uh, newton second law right f is equal to delta p divided by delta t so there is a constant change in this momenta so there is a constant force acting uh, in this time okay so there is a constant force so what is the constant force you already found in the previous question that is 3.5 newton so from time 0 to 4 second there is a constant force see there is a constant force right then from uh, 4 seconds to 6 second what happens there is no changes in this momenta okay so this value is 0 so what will be the force that is also 0 right so the resultant force we, here we are discussing with the resultant force right the graph is showing the momentum of the block where is that momentum comes from what is the resultant force acting on the block accordingly the momentum of that block will change so the resultant force is zero from four second to six second okay so resultant force is zero so what is the resultant force by the way resultant force is the what about uh, what is the force that you are given plus the frictional force okay Th that will be in the opposite direction so minus f okay this is a force but what you need x is equal to r plus f okay do you have a resultant force at this time no it's zero so what will be the varying force what is your frictional force then the same would be the varying force which means that the uh, the force would be 2 so 2 newton will be applying and the same frictional force in the opposite direction in this direction 2 newton that's a varying force the same amount of force is in the opposite direction due to the rough surface of so both are balanced so there is no movement so there is no movement there is no moment right so uh, from 4 second to 6 second this would be 2 okay so here you may uh, uh, the find out it will be a straight line downwards so you can plot it over here so this would be the graph right so from this um, 0 seconds to 4 seconds 3.5 and from 4 seconds to 6 seconds 2 so let's move on to the next question F question number 4 a beaker in air contains a liquid the base of the beaker is in contact with the uh, liquid and has area a as shown in figure 4.1 the liquid has a density rho and fills the beaker uh, to a depth h by using uh, the definitions of pressure and density show that p is equal to rho g h where p is the pressure due to the uh, liquid that is exerted on the base of the beaker and g is the acceleration of free fall so here it is given in the a part you need to use the definitions of pressure and density okay so what's the um, equation for pressure p is equal to force over area right what is force mass multiplied by uh, the acceleration divided by a okay so uh, what is the acceleration acting on it the acceleration due to gravity of course right there is no uh, forces acting on it so it would be mg by a of course the force acting on it would be the weight of this liquid field right then you need to use the density formula as well so density rho is equal to mass divided by volume so here you may use this formula to uh, rearrange this equation for us uh, or substitute for the mass right so mass is equal to rho v so please substitute this uh, mass in this pressure equation so it will be rho v g over area okay so what is the volume by the way for a beaker so it's a beaker right so the area uh, the area of the bottom is a and the height is h so what will be the volume of this liquid field it will be the area multiplied by the height right so pressure is equal to rho you can substitute for v as 
volume is area multiplied by the height multiplied by g divided by a so a and a get cancelled so you will be getting rho g h hence it is shown the b part is such as why the equation in a does not give the total pressure on the base of the beaker so at the base there will be basically two forces acting on it so at this on the surface of this liquid there will be an atmospheric pressure okay the atmosphere will be containing particles so this atmosphere will be exerting a force on this uh, liquid okay and as you go deeper to the liquid there will be a pressure due to this weight of the liquid also okay so at the bottom the atmospheric pressure also be there and uh, the pressure due to the height also be there so that will be the total pressure acting on the base of the beaker but in this question okay or in this equation p is equal to rho g h we are considering only the uh, pressure due to the height The C part of this question, figure 4.2 shows the variation of the total pressure inside the liquid with depth x below the surface, which means that the bigger is this, the water is filled up to this level, let's say. So as you go deeper, this would be uh, x is equal to zero and the x value is increasing so what is the pressure it's given on this figure so as you are uh, the as the depth of this um, this liquid is increases the pressure also increases in a constant rate right so you need to determine the density of the liquid so as the um, depth is increases the pressure also be increases right so how to find out the density you may use the formula that is the change in the pressure is equal to rho g what is the change in the height okay so here uh, what, what is the um, what you need to find out you may consider the whole uh, change okay so what is the change in pressure the change in pressure is from uh, 9.6 to 9.66 or the change in the pressure as you go deeper is 9.66 minus 9.60 but please don't forget there is a term on this x-axis given it's on it's multiplied by 10 to the power 4 pascal okay this is the pressure change that is equal to rho which is you need to find out multiplied by the g value is 9.81 multiplied by the high difference so it is going deeper from this point to the bottom from the surface to the bottom so what is the high difference this 8 centimeter so it's 8 centimeter so you need to convert into meter so it will be 8 multiplied by um, 10 to the power minus 2 do uh, please uh, rearrange this formula so you will be getting rho is equal to 9.66 minus 9.60 times 10 to the power 4 or it is 0 0.06 okay M divided by 9.81 multiplied by 8 times 10 to the power minus 2 so do the calculation and you'll be getting 764.5 kilogram per meter cube so this is the density of the liquid okay then the d part is a solid cylinder is held stationary by a wire okay so that the base of the cylinder is in line with the surface of the liquid so this is the surface of the liquid okay so if you are considering the whole figure so the water is filled okay the water is filled over here and there is a block okay this is surface and the block or the cylinder is here okay it's really mild i know uh, let me choose one okay this is the cylinder that you are considering so now it is here okay so it is using a wire to keep it uh, stationary okay the cylinder has a length of uh, 4 times 10 to the power minus 
2 meter and a cross sectional area 3.7 times 10 to the power minus 4 meter square. The tension in this uh, wire is 0 0.53 Newton. So if uh, this is the uh, tension, okay, tension is the force on that uh, that wire, right? So uh, we, uh, it is in stationary. So stationary, which means that it is in equilibrium. Uh, so the upward force must be equal to the downward force. So the upward force here it is 0 0.53 Newton. So which force is, is balancing this force? Of course, the weight of the cylinder, right? So weight of the cylinder is uh, given as 0 0.53. It's hidden here, the weight of the cylinder. 0 0.53 Newton. So that's how it is balanced or stationary at this position. Okay. Now the cylinder is lowered and held stationary by the wire so that the top of the cylinder is in level with the surface of the liquid which means that the top is of the cylinder is balanced by the surface it is here okay so this is the uh, second position calculate the new tension on uh, in the wire so you need to find out the tension now okay so how to find out the tension okay if what what is the downward force or the resultant force downward it will be balanced by the tension okay right so if it is lower in a liquid what will be the extra force always it will be having a weight acting on it so is there any extra force when it is lowered into liquid yes there will be an up, up thrust acting on it right on the upward direction which will decrease the uh, tension on the wire up thrust acting on an object is due to a difference in the hydrostatic pressure okay so the thrust formula is rho g v by archimedes principle so the up thrust value you may find out like this substituting 6 for uh sorry 7 for 6.5 the uh, density value multiplied by the g value multiplied by the volume volume how to find out the volume area multiplied by the length both values are given so please just substitute after substituting and doing the calculation you will be getting the value of up thrust as 0 0.11 newton okay now the block is having weight always there will be a weight and there won't be any changes in this value of weight right but uh, now it's having an up thrust also okay so what is the resultant uh, force there is a tension there's a tension in the upward direction also right so since uh, the um, cylinder is stationary you may find out that the up upward force must be equal to the downward forces so what are the up upward forces up thrust and the tension the new tension is equal to the downward force weight so what you need to find out this tension so tension is equal to weight minus the up uh, up thrust weight is already given as i told you what is the tension in the previous case would be the same as the weight of the cylinder so directly you may substitute 0 0.53 minus 0 0.11 which is equal to 0 0.42 newton so the new tension acting on this uh, wire would be 0 0.42 newton